Hello, and welcome to our webinar, Graphic Novels for All. I'm Heather Booth, and I'm an audio editor at Booklist. Before we get into all of these great titles, I'd like to go over some technical details. So today's slide presentation and title list were included in the reminder email that you received from Zoom about an hour ago. To download them, please open that email. All the way at the bottom, there should be some links that you can click on to um, access those files. You can also download them by copying the URLs on the screen here into your web browser. If you have any trouble at all, just contact us at webinars at booklistonline.com. The audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions that you might have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question or if you need any technical assistance, just click the Q&A, type your message into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions, and we will pass along all other questions to today's panelists so they can follow up with you after the webinar. Booklist offers closed captioning on all of our webinars. To enable or disable captions on your screen, please look for and click the live transcript icon on the toolbar mentioned earlier. From there, you can select show or hide subtitles from the menu that appears. If you choose to enable subtitles, you can adjust the size of the captions at any time by selecting caption setting. And finally, Booklist expects all participants to maintain an atmosphere of respect and fairness. Anyone who violates this standard of behavior, including engaging in any form of harassment, may, at the discretion of the organizers, be immediately removed. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from some wonderful representatives. Erica Stone, the Associate Manager, Library Marketing at Random House Children's Books. Uh, Daniel Presley, Marketing Associate at Penguin, Penguin Young Readers. Casey Griffin, Senior Marketing Manager at Sequoia Kids Media. Mark DeVera, Sales and Marketing Director at Yen Press. And Sarah Anderson, the Director of Publishing Sales at Viz Media. First, we will hear from Erica Stone. Erica is the Associate Manager for Library Marketing at Random House Children's Books. Thanks so much for being here, Erica. Hello, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm here to tell you about some of our upcoming graphic novels. Um, next slide. So, Cat Out of Water. We're excited to announce a new series of graphic novels based on the timeless Dr. Seuss books. These Seuss graphic novels are not adaptations, but instead are original stories created by some of the most talented comic book writers in the industry. The first book in this series is called Cat Out of Water, and it takes us back to the day when Sally and her brother are visited by the cat in the hat. These graphic novels are chapter books and provide a great transition for fans of the original Dr. Seuss picture books and series like Elephant and Piggy who are ready for longer stories. Next slide. Uh, Kira and the Maybe Space Princess. So this is perfect for fans of Sailor Moon um, and Katie and the Cat Sitter. Kira wants to be a magical girl, but her dreams seem impossible until a catacorn, that's a cat unicorn space princess, crashes into her backyard. Is Kira's dream of being a magical girl really achievable or is catacorn not what she seems? Next slide. Next stop. This is Debbie Fong's debut graphic novel, and it's a story that explores grief, resilience, and the importance of laughter, which is perfect for middle graders. The story follows Pia, who after the death of her younger brother and her family's relocation to a new town, embarks on a road trip with a family friend. They make stops at various odd and amusing roadside attractions, but the journey becomes much more than just a series of stops. The friendships Pia forms along the way turn out to be just as valuable as the final destination. With a blend of humor, heart, magic, and mystery, Debbie Fong weaves together a moving story that is sure to captivate readers. Next slide. Blood City Rollers. Tween Vampire Roller Derby. Nuff said. Skates on, fangs out. Get ready to roll as Mina, a 13-year-old ice skater, embarks in the dark side in this thrilling graphic novel. This perfectly paranormal story is sure to leave you breathless. Next slide. Magic Treehouse Afternoon on the Amazon. Did you know the, the best-selling chapter book series is now available as graphic novels? Magic, mystery, time travel, 
get whisked, whisked away to the Amazon rainforest on a high stakes adventure with brother and sister team Jack and Annie. Next slide. Pizza and Taco Wrestling Mania. Get ready to rumble with pizza and taco in the next book in this hilarious graphic novel series. The foodie besties need to find, need to find a sport they'll both be awesome at. Baseball? No. Soccer? Nah. Football? Maybe. Wrestling? Yes. These two are ready to throw down, or at least they think they are. Next slide. Uh, Marshmallow Martians Museum Sleepover. Get ready for some out of this world hilarity with the Marshmallow Martians. These lovable aliens are on the hunt for something big and they know just where to find it. The Natural History Museum, of course. This entertaining third installment of this delightful graphic chapter series is bound to get kids giggling. Next slide. Gnome and Rhett, time to party. Get ready for the second installment of an early graphic novel series featuring your favorite hilarious best friends. They're back and ready to party. Join them as they come up with an entirely new holiday, make unexpected birthday wishes, and try to jazz up their exercise routine. No matter the occasion, these two will always have something special to celebrate each other. So put on your party hats and get ready to laugh along with these funny friends. Next slide. Uh, Sweet Valley Twins Choosing Sides. The best-selling world of Sweet Valley returns in graphic novel form. Elizabeth's best friend, Amy, wants to join Cheer Club, but that means going against the Unicorn Club. Can Elizabeth protect Amy, even if it means standing up for her sister, Jessica, to do it? Next slide. Hilo 10, Rise of the Cat. Polly, Hilo's beloved warrior cat friend, finds herself in trouble after joining Hilo for some adventurous escapades. She breaks too many rules and is eventually sent to Wombatton, a magical boarding school for troubled children. However, strange things are happening at the school and Polly is determined to uncover the truth. Students are disappearing and Polly's roommate is being bullied relentlessly. Can Polly solve the mystery and reunite with Hilo and her friends on Earth? Don't miss the latest installment of this beloved series that both kids and grownups adore. Uh, next slide. Hayden Systems. Uh, this is the last book that I'm gonna share with you. And I just wanna mention that it was the 2023 National Book Award long list selection. Um, have you ever wondered how water, electricity and the internet work? These are essential systems we use every day, but do we really understand how they were developed and how they're implemented in our world? This nonfiction science graphic novel takes you on a journey from the inception of these systems to their modern day usage and future applications. Discover the fascinating world of these fundamental systems and their importance in our daily lives. Thank you. Thank you so much, Erica. Our next presenter will be Danielle Presley. Danielle is a marketing associate on the school and library team at Penguin Young Readers. Take it away, Danielle. Hi, thank you. Um, today I'll be sharing a few of Penguin's favorite graphic novels. I'll quickly go through a few titles that came out earlier this year, some that have just published this season, and then a quick preview of what we have coming out early next year. So this next slide. Um, we have four titles that came out in the spring and summer of this year. First, we have the second installation of the Shark Princess series. This can be read alone without reading the first. And then this book is a great one for validating introverted kids in a world where the most common stereotype is that kids thrive off social environments. Kids will be drawn to and engage with a character that shows them um, it's okay to also enjoy your alone time. Um, the Haunting of Loch Ness Castle is another second book, this time in the Bigfoot and Nessie series. And again, it can be read on its own with a haunted castle and ghost who ends up becoming friends with Bigfoot and Nessie as main plot points of the story, this book strikes a perfect balance of mystery and heart. And at 64 pages and featuring a quick pace and snappy dialogue, this is the perfect graphic novel for reluctant readers. Um, Doodles from the Boogie Down focuses on a young Dominican girl as she navigates middle school, her strict mother, shifting friendships, and her dream of being an artist in this debut coming of age graphic novel inspired by the author's tween years in New York City and specifically the Bronx. And then lastly on this slide, we have The Last Comics on Earth. This is a full color graphic novel spinoff series based on the best-selling Last Kids on Earth series. 
with a second book coming out next year. And so the next slide. Now for the titles that recently published. First, we have The Deep, one of my favorites because I love all things about the ocean and weird animals that live there. Um, the Deep is a survey of animals that live in the deepest parts of the ocean, created in an exciting graphic nonfiction format. Um, the first person commentary by the animals themselves cover a wealth of facts from the surface of the ocean to the darkest trenches and the beautiful full color illustrations bring them to life. As you can see in this next slide, each spread is separated by a new sea creature with panels outlining different facts about each. Next, we have the graphic memoir, Mexicid by Pedro Martin. Um, Pedro has grown up hearing stories about his legendary crime-fighting grandfather, who was once a part of the Mexican Revolution. But that doesn't mean Pedro is excited at the news that Abuelito is coming to live with their family. After all, Pedro has eight brothers and sisters, and the house is crowded enough. Still, Pedro piles into the Winnebago with his family for a road trip to Mexico to bring Abuelito home. And what follows is the trip of a lifetime, one filled with laughs and heartaches. And on this next slide um, is one of the interiors detailing the family tree and the differences between the kids in his family who were born in Mexico and then the ones who were born in the US. This next title is perfect to mention since it's Halloween today. Um, learning to become a witch is hella difficult. Luckily, Gwen can always count on her two best friends in the whole world for help, except Sloan and Miles aren't exactly from this world. They're from the Hollow Lands, a monstrous realm, which uh, they can only leave as the year creeps toward Halloween. And on the next slide, you can see that this year, Gwen is determined to flex her magical skills armed with her first ever grimoire, She's hoping her friends will finally see that she has what it takes to leave boring suburbia behind and join them in the hollow lands. And then next we have Saving Hana. Oh, next we have Pause. Um, our series Pause follows a group of girls with a love of animals, but an inability to have any of their own pets who start a dog walking service. And Priya puts herself first. The holidays have arrived for the pause team and the girls are about to discover that not all surprises are necessary good ones. P Gabby's parents finally get her a cell phone for Christmas, but instead of only using it for emergencies, she soon gets swept up in posting about pause online. And when one of her cute doggo videos goes viral, she becomes obsessed with becoming internet famous. And then on the next slide, you can just see some of the interiors, so cute. And then next is uh, the Who Was Graphic Novels. Um, this is a biography series. Um, the biography series Who Was line is now available in graphic novels. We started publishing this series at the beginning of last year with books focusing on Rosa Parks, Cesar Chavez, and Amelia Earhart. And this fall will we just published these two biographies of the 14th Dalai Lama and Tichuba. Each of these books have own voices comic creators bringing these biographies to light. And this is just a small snapshot of what we've published with 10 books out already and more to come. And I'm sure your readers will enjoy this beloved series in a new format. Next, um, moving on to some of our YA graphic novels, we have Danger and Other Unknown Risks. Um, so here's the deal. On midnight of January 1st, 2000, the world ended, but it wasn't technology that killed it, it was magic. Now, years later, the earth has transformed. Magic works, sort of. People are happy, sort of, but this new world isn't stable. And unless Marguerite de Pruitt and her canine pal Daisy do something about it, it's, it'll tilt into deadly chaos. Good thing we they've been training their whole lives for this and are destined to succeed, or so they think. And then on the next slide, you can also see some interiors from this as well. I really love the colors on this. And then next is The Glass Scientist, which is currently an ongoing webcomic. As Laura Olympus did with Greek mythology, the gra Glass Scientist does with 19th century science fiction. It not only puts a fresh spin on these classic books, but also uses them as a springboard for a multi-layered story that deals with contemporary issues like identity and self-acceptance. 
and volume one collects chapters one through seven of the webcomic. It also features a brand new side story, um, a behind the scenes look at artwork and more exclusive bonus content. And the next slide can give you a sampling of the art and you can expect volume two to come out next fall. And then next is If You'll Have Me, which is one of my favorite books that just came out. And I follow the creator Uni on just about every social media platform that exists. With three star reviews already, this is an aspirational YA set on a college campus with two girls grappling with their pasts and navigating their futures. Momo Gardner is the kind of friend who's always ready to lend a helping hand. She's introverted, sensitive, and maybe um, a little too trusting, but she likes to believe the best in people. PG, on the other hand, is a bit of a lone wolf, despite her reputation for being a flirt and a player. Underneath all that cool mystery, she's actually quick to smile, and when she falls for someone, she falls hard. And then on the next slide, you can see um, some of the interiors, and you get a little sampling of these characters' meet cute moment. And then next is who to F Cares, which is the second book by Huda Fami, the first being Who to F Are You, and was recently announced as a National Book Award finalist. Huda and her sisters can't believe in it when their parents announce they're actually taking a vacation this summer to Disney World, but it's not quite as perfect as it seems. Back home in Dearborn, she and her family blend right in because there are so many other Muslim families, but not so much in Florida and along the way. This graphic novel explores what it's like to grow up Muslim in America um, with the joy and humor. And it's perfect. It's a perfect balance of big themes like identity, faith, and family told in a down to earth voice. And then next slide, um, some of the interiors. And then next. So on this last slide, I have five titles that we have coming out next year for you to look forward to. Punk Rock Karaoke is a coming of age tale that draws upon the explosive joy of the underground scene while raising questions about authenticity and the importance of community and what it means to succeed on your own terms. Um, Monkey King and the World of Myths, which is a reimagined story of the Monkey King battling monsters um, from ancient Greek mythology, Fake Chinese Sounds, which is a middle grade graphic novel about a Taiwanese American girl navigating identity bullying and the messy process of learning to be comfortable in her skin. Lucky Scramble, which is an enthralling character-driven um, window into the wildly popular yet sometimes unknown competitive sport of speed cubing. And then lastly, Puzzled, um, which is a graphic memoir about growing up with undiagnosed OCD that is as funny as it is powerfully candid and open-hearted. And then next slide. And then before, I turn it over to the next person. I just wanted to call out our Penguin Graphics catalog linked here on the screen. So you can use either the link or the QR code. Um, this is a brochure that highlights all of our graphic novels, including our backlist. Um, and we try to update this seasonally so you never miss on any of the titles you have to offer. Um, next. And that's it for Penguin titles. Thank you so much for being here with me and the other panelists. Um, the Penguin um, Young Reader School and Library team has more resources on our website, such as book lists, discussion guides, author videos, story time activities, and more. You would just need to go to penguinclassroom.com and you can reach us on any of the social media handles listed here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Danielle. We will now hear from Casey Griffin. Casey is the Senior Marketing Manager at Phoenix International Publications. As the senior marketing manager, her duties include developing marketing plans across imprints, creating monthly newsletters to showcase new and seasonal titles, coordinating with licensors for creative collaborations, and managing Phoenix participation in industry events. Her favorite part of her job is the ever-changing day-to-day that presents new challenges and opportunities, something I'm sure the librarians listening can really relate to. Thank you so much for being here, Casey. The floor is yours. Hello, um, great to be here. Hope you guys are all having a great afternoon. Um, I am Casey Griffin and today I'm talking about our Sequoia Kids Media line and our graphic novels within that line. Um, so Sequoia Kids Media, um, we have print and digital content. Um, we have favorite characters, new ideas and engaging graphics. 
Um, all the titles I'll be presenting today um, are listed with their um, print ISBNs, but they're also available as ebooks and read alongs. Um, all of these titles will also have extra downloadable content you can find at our website at sequoiakidsmedia.com. Um, that will include like teacher's guides, coloring pages, and downloadable posters. So let's jump in. Um, so I'm going to start with our It's Her Story series and spend actually a lot of my time talking about this series. Um, this series explores the lives of amazing women from scientists and activists to writers and artists um, who have changed the world. Um, these stories highlight the challenges and successes of essential and often unknown or understudied women trailblazers um, with content that encourages discussion about important social themes. Um, these books are full color um, and educator guides are available for all of them as well. Uh, next. So we start with Rosa Parks, um, a very household name, but um, these books really dive into um, the, be the beginning of their stories and the, you know, the details um, that you don't often get um, with just a school overview or or an initial overview. Um, so um, we really talk about um, the whole civil rights movement and her role in it. Um, so this was written by Lauren Burke and illustrated by Shane Cluster. Um, Lauren's actually done a couple different books for us um, here, and this is one of them. And she did an amazing job telling um, Rosa's story. Uh, next. So next is um, Marie Curie, written by Kara Callen and Rosie Baker. Um, again, a very household name, but how much do you really know about Marie Curie? Um, do, do you know that she won the Congressional Gold Medal and the Presidential Medal of Freedom? Um, so again, a lot of details. Um, about her life that you might not otherwise know. Um, next. And then we'll go into Ida B. Wells. Um, she was a groundbreaking journalist um, and civil rights activist. Um, she worked fiercely for the equal white rights treatment of black people in schools and societies um, and in voting. Um, this was written by Anastasia Maglior Williams and illustrated by Alana Harris, Eliana Harris, sorry. Um, and it really tells, you know, the in-depth details of her story as well. Next. Um, and then we have Dolly Parton, uh, written by Emily Squish and illustrated by Lydia Fernandez Abril. Um, this again, starts off as, with Dolly as uh, an infant, really, and takes you through her life and where she got the information for so many of her songs. But we also talk a lot about her life um, as a business owner and as a philanthropist um, and all the work she does to make the world a brighter place. Um, next. Um, it's her story, story, Shirley Chisholm, written by Patrice Ags and illustrated by Marquia Janai. Um, we we start Shirley's story um, all the way back with her childhood in Barbados, and we get to see her story develop all the way through her seeking the presidential nomination um, and all of the work she did to get there and after. Um, so we get a really detailed look into her life. Next. Um, it's her story, Amelia Earhart, written by Kim Maldowski um, and illustrated by Alan Brown. Um, Amelia Earhart um, was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic. Um, and in doing research in this, uh, to write this title, um, the author actually 
also flew a plane not across the Atlantic, but she did fly an old school plane like Amelia did. Um, so we get to see Amelia's trip through her education and how she started flying planes and how she went higher and higher to reach her goals. Next. Um, it's her story, Josephine Baker, written by Lauren Gamble and illustrated by Marquia Janai. Um, Josephine Baker, we know her story as the famous Parisian entertainer, um, but she was also the first black woman um, to, or she was a volunteer spy during World War II and she was the mother of 12 adopted children. Um, and we get to see every little piece of her life um, in this book. Next, um, it's her story, Rosalind Franklin, written by Karen Deceive and illustrated by Samantha Chow. Um, Rosalind Franklin was a British chemist um, during the 1940s and 50s. She really expanded our knowledge of physics and later viruses. Um, she took the iconic photo 51 um, that really contributed to our understanding of how DNA works. Um, she And we get to see her develop through her science knowledge. We get to see her learn how to make her own testing equipment. We get to see her um, fight for her place in the science world. Um, next. It's her story, Irina Sundler. Um, this one is actually coming out in spring next year. So it's something to look forward to. Um, this is written by Margaret Littman and illustrated by Sarah Luna. Um, Irina Sundler was a social worker in Nazi occupied Poland during World War II. Um, she snuck out more than 2,500 children out of the um, Jewish ghettos um, and saved their lives. She gave them whole new identities, but kept their birth names hidden in a jar so that she could find these children after the war and give them back their identities um, and tell their stories. Um, so this is one to look forward to this coming spring. Uh, next. And it's her story, Sacagawea. This is also coming out this spring. Um, this is written by Randiel Hidao Teton uh, and illustrated by Allie McKnight. Um, Randy L, um, who is the author, um, is actually the model for the current Sacagawea coin, US coin. Um, so she is, was very connected to the story right off the bat. Um, but Sacagawea was, you know, a brilliant, brilliant multilingual Shoshone girl. Um, I think she spoke five languages and she traversed an enormous amount of land with a baby on her back and really was the whole reason that the Lewis and Clark expedition survived as long as they did. Um, so we get to see through her childhood um, and through her expedition life in this book. And it's very, very interesting to read. Um, next. Um, and I just wanted to give you all a quick sneak peek of what will be coming in the future. So this will be fall 2024. Um, Mae Jemison is an astronaut, doctor, engineer, writer, teacher, and dancer. Um, she was the first black woman to go to space. Um, and I, I highly encourage everyone to learn more about her. Um, the um, trade version of this book will be coming um, in April, but like I said, um, the library version will be coming next fall and I'm very excited to see its final pages. Uh, next, uh, another quick sneak peek here. Um, Billie Jean King is an iconic champion, tennis champion that changed the sports world um, and also helped pass a lot of historic laws against gender discrimination. Um, it's her story, Billie Jean King, will be available for trade in May um, next year. Um, and 
in school and library binding in the fall again. Uh, next. Um, and little ones will love this series. Um, this is the Do I Have To series. Um, our fun animal friends um, will help little ones learn about being kind and respectful. Um, this series is fun and easy to read um, and it promotes essential social emotional learning concepts like, you know, staying tidy, being polite and, you know, sharing. Um, these books are super, super cute. Um, and next, um, and this is last but not least, our Active Minds graphic novels. Um, these sweetly illustrated books combine the graphic novel format with an engaging seek and find play. Um, little ones will learn early concepts like letters, numbers, um, color shapes, and first words. Uh, next. Uh, so that's all from me today. Um, if anyone has any questions, my email um, and the general, general marketing email are up on the screen. Um, so our social media sites. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Casey. Next up, we'll hear from Mark DeVera. Mark is the sales and marketing director of Yen Press. A fixture of the American graphic novel industry for over a decade, Mark is the coolest kid in the manga club and has promoted many great series to librarians and retailers throughout the years. Mark is also the smallest guy in the graphic novel industry, according to his bio. <laughs> if anyone else makes this claim, they are lying. Take it away, Mark. Thank you very much. Thanks for the wonderful introduction. So how's it going, everybody? I'm Mark DeVera from Yen Press. Yen Press being a publisher of a lot of different types of graphic novels. We're largely known for what we do in the manga space. But in, in addition to manga, we also have a lot of original graphic novels that are made in-house by artists that we uh, ourselves have found. And we also have a Korean comic line. In fact, we are the biggest publisher of Korean comics in the English reading world. Uh, before I begin, I, I do want to acknowledge a, a potential mistake I may have made in, in preparing for this. I interpreted graphic novels for all, as in for, for everybody, kids, teenagers, adults, and I've tried to have a few examples in each of those categories. Uh, I probably should have realized that perhaps this was a a webinar that was more for titles that are actually literally all, all ages, top, graded as all ages. I do have a great example in that. In fact, that's the first title that I'm presenting. Uh, so if you're here for that, there's probably uh, two titles that that you would be interested in. Uh, but um, so for your patrons, but perhaps for yourself, you'll enjoy everything else I'll uh, I'll show you today. So without further ado, let's get started. So first, I'd like to introduce you all to JY for Kids. JY for Kids is our middle grade imprint, one that we started back in 2017 due to the success that we had with Svetlana Shamakova's Barry Brook Middle School, which is a series of graphic novels that you may be familiar with through its individual releases, such as Awkward, Brave, and Crush. And, you know, Svet has effectively been synonymous with the JY imprints, but Two years ago, we released another original graphic novel from a creator named Ban Hyung Jung, who actually worked as Svet's assistant on, uh, on Crush. Uh, her first title was Kyle's Little Sister, and I, I'm happy to say that we are releasing her second graphic novel, which is the next title that you'll see here, one that's called Amy's Big Brother. So, you know, I think you might notice a theme with these two titles, Kyle's Little Sister, Amy's Big Brother. Amy's Big Brother is, is actually a prequel to Kyle's Little Sister with events taking place before the, you know, what happens in that first graphic novel. And this one focuses on the character of, of Andrew, a character who was introduced in Kyle's Little Sister as one of the best friends of, of Kyle, the titular character, the brother of Grace. Uh, so the start of Amy's Big Brother is pretty similar to Kyle's Little Sister, as you can see on the next slide. And the similarity, of course, is the sibling rivalry aspect, uh, except this time told in the point of view of the older brother. You know, Andrew is uh, is, is an adoptee and he has uh, some he has some thoughts about the, that experience, uh, especially as it pertains to what he sees as preferential treatment to his his younger sister, Amy. So the start of it has to do with him being happy 
to move into middle school, says he gets to be away from, from Amy, at least for, for a little while. He thinks middle school will be this wonderful thing in which he gets to be away from Amy. He gets to focus on his aspirations of being the best basketball player ever. Uh, but what he runs into is a little different, as you can see on the next slide. And by that, I mean he meets his first love. Um, you know, in addition to the sibling rivalry experience, Amy's big brother addresses the first crush experience, which turns into the first girlfriend experience, which turns into not just Andrew, but Hannah, his, his first girlfriend, learning learning the, 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 the good things about relationships, but also learning the bad things, because this is a relationship where the, the emotions are a bit unbalanced. Andrew's definitely more invested in it than, than Hannah is, so it goes from him being too uh, you know, reaching out to her too much. It goes from her pulling back too much and it, it has to do with the fallout in between. And what I what I find really great about this is, you know, here with the theme of all ages, while this is a middle school experience, this is something that many people deal with in those middle school years with their first loves, with their first girlfriends. This is actually something that, that everybody deals with. You know, I'm not to age myself. I'm much further away from, from my middle school years than I once was. Uh, but even but even then, I, I still talk to friends and 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 what I read when I read Amy's Big Brother is very reminiscent to 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 things we all deal with with our friendships and our romantic relationships as life goes on. And I think it was handled very gracefully um, in Amy's Big Brother. Uh, as you can tell, I am a bit passionate about this because of how close we get Yen Press are to creator Bon Hyung Jung, a creator that we found at the School of Visual Arts here in New York City. And, and it touches me to see how much he's grown as an illustrator, but also as a storyteller. Um, so, you know, this is the main all ages title that we have to present here to you all today. So I encourage you to check out not just Amy's Big Brother, which releases this December, but also Kyle's Little Sister, which is available now. Moving on to the Yen Press side of things. Yen Press, of course, being our main imprint in which we house all the wonderful works of manga that we've published. The first one is actually on the border of all ages. This one is technically teen, 13 and up, 15 minutes before we really date. Also much like Amy's big brother having to do with sort of this first love experience. But in 15 minutes before we really date, this isn't a couple that has, you know, finds each other uh, um, in middle school, but rather it's a couple that has known each other for quite some time. As you can see on the next slide, here's the, the wonderful, um, the adorable artwork that's in the pages of 15 minutes before we really date. This, uh, so the two have been friends for quite some time. They decided to jump head first into the experience of being being a couple. So I, I would say that the focus of this is sort of these these innocent episodes of the two of them, you know, deciding is this time for our first kiss or, you know, a simple movie date. So uh, next slide to show even more of the, the amazing artwork of this series. So, so yeah, I would say just all together, a, a really, a really, a really wholesome story uh, for, for those of your readers who are, who are manga fans and who are looking for something on the romantic side. And next up, uh, I alluded to the fact that I, I brought titles for, for all, all levels of readers. This one's probably more for mature readers. This is a collection of short stories by Toriyuman Takeda, who is a rising star in the world of manga. And the short stories you have here range, you know, range all over the place, such as the next one that you can see, which is the first story in this, in this book in which this princess is, is kidnapped. Uh, and, and she's taken care of by this caretaker who she can't see because she's blindfolded. And then uh, and then at the end, you know, finds that the caretaker is this is this deaf, deaf person who is who is a prisoner of sorts also. And it, it, and it addresses the the uh, the feelings that she had towards him, as you could see, beautiful artwork, very imaginative uh, medieval world that we have here. Uh, this yesteryear that never existed, that was well imagined by Takeda Sensei. And on the next slide to showcase the breadth of storytelling that you'll see here, <laughs> very provocative title we have with this one. The title of it is 10 minutes later, the cops showed up about this, <laughs> this lady who finds this person in, in her apartment and then the interaction the two of them have until the cops eventually show up. So a lot of, a lot of love, I'd say love is sort of the central theme to most of the stories here. Some of it romantic, some of it platonic. Um, and also just really great characterization, amazing illustration. There's a reason why Takeda Sensei is a rising star. So if you if you like great, great manga from some of the best to do it, I highly encourage you to check out One More Step, Come Stand By My Side. 
And to wrap things up, let's take a look at a couple of Korean comics. So from Eyes Press, uh, which is our imprint for Korean comics, we have Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint. You're going to ask me the question, Mark, if you were to take a look at a crystal ball, at what are going to be the biggest Korean comics of the coming year? Um, what would it be? And my answer to you is it will be Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint, one of the most highly requested series, one of the most read on webcomic platforms. We are happy to bring Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint to a print in a print edition to fans this coming December. So next slide to show you some of the artwork. This story has to do with this guy who reads this, this web novel and he's the only one, like hundreds of chapters, there's only one person reading, it's him. And as he gets to the last chapter, what happens is the world starts to enter this apocalyptic state. He's in this train, the electricity shuts off, these strange fantasy beings start appearing and they're put into this, this sort of uh, squid game, battle royale type situation. And next slide. And what he realizes there is that the events of the novel that he, he's been reading are coming to life. The novel is happening in real life. The characters in that novel are real, which must mean that the main character of the novel is real, which means he must find this main character in order to save the world from this apocalyptic state that it seems to be entering into. So a lot of great uh, artwork, a lot of a lot of intrigue, a lot of suspense, a lot going on. So there's a reason why this has become one of the most popular web comics and one of the most requested series that we at Eyes Press have had. So. Uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to this one coming out in December. And if you haven't started carrying Korean comics, I highly encourage you to do so because this is going to be, this is one of the fastest growing categories already and it's only going to get bigger. And last, uh, we have this series called The Horizon, which uh, ends in three volumes, the third volume coming out this December. And this one is also a tale of, of apocalypse, but not a fantasy one, a very realistic apocalypse in which, um, you know, the start is sort of, sort of mysterious exactly what's happening, but you can sort of tell that the world has fallen into some sort of warlike state. Um, so something that people have done to themselves. And, and that's kind of the theme here. You know, if you think of horror as this human evil personified uh, as a metaphor of human evil, this skips the metaphor, this goes right into the human evil, as you could see in these next few pages in which you see the brilliance of J.H.'s comic storytelling, the excellence of, of his illustration. Um, yeah, just just the things that he does with uh, with the pages over here is is unlike anything I've seen, not just in Korea, but just just elsewhere. So we have we have a comic uh, storytelling genius over here working on on a very hard hitting and um, and dark story, but also within its darkness, a lot of uplifting moments because our main boy over here finds a girl who's also trying to survive in this apocalyptic state, and the two of them roam the world together, uh, trying to survive, which has its happy moments, of course. It's great that the two have each other, but as you can see here, it also has its dark moments. And anyway, uh, that's that's the last title I have. So like I said, covered a wide array, uh, you know, with my interpretation of what it meant uh, to enter an all ages graphic novel webinar. So I hope, you know, for all of those of you who are looking for literally all, all ages, I, I highly encourage you to check out Amy's Big Brother. If you're looking for a wide array that covers many different ages, then I think I, I presented some great titles. So I hope you, I hope you try them out. Happy Halloween and take care. Thank you so much, Mark. Such striking illustrations there. Oh, thank you for sharing those. Our final panelist today will be Sarah Anderson. Sarah is the Director of Publishing and Sales at Viz Media, working with distributors and retailers in the U.S., Canada, the U.K., Australia, and India. Bring us home, Sarah. Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining today. Um, I want to go through some uh, of our some titles that have come out already and some upcoming titles. So we will start off with a very exciting prospect betwixt a horror manga anthology. This is a collection of short stories. Uh, there are three from Japanese creators, three from US creators. Um, and the really fun thing about this is the cover illustration is by Junji Ito and it's dual sided. Um, so like the Japanese sections, um, there's, there's this sort of very, very Junji Ito-esque horror, um, very dark look to it. And then on the other side, it's slightly more kind of American movie style in a way. Um, it's a really clever way of doing it. This is such a good collection. Um, it's a, featuring a range of well-known creators from both the US and Japan. Um, and there's also a forward by Junji Ito. 
The next slide shows you uh, just a couple of examples of some of the very dark and twisted illustrations. That second one is possibly my favorite because it's just very, very creepy indeed. Particularly appro to appropriate today considering it's Halloween. And then we keep with the horror theme with our next title, which is Mimi's Tales of Terror. Um, it's another in our Junji Ito um, collection of really scary stories. These are all based on uh, sort of true stories, urban myths, if you like. Um, it's a collection of urban legends um, by uh, Hirokatsu Kihara and Ichiro Nakayama. Um, the story itself was called Shin Mimi Bukuro. Apologies for the pronunciation there. Um, but it's been given the Junji Ito style and it's just so beautiful but also very very creepy again the next slide will show you some of the uh you know kind of images um the idea of you know spying on somebody and then then suddenly being able to see you is very very creepy indeed um Junji Ito is one of the most popular manga creators horror as a genre is one of the most popular manga genres and um, we have a really good range of Junji Ito titles now, which prove very, very popular in libraries. And we go to a very different kind of story now, Neighbourhood Story. This is so pink and jolly and bright and so 90s. It's amazing. Um, it's by Ai Yazawa, who is the creator of Nana. Nana got uh, hugely popular due to um, book talk. Uh, the 90s seems to be something that is very much back in vogue again. And this is one of um, Yazawa's earlier titles, never been available in English previously. And it's a classic romance series. Um, it's the main character wants to take the world of fashion by storm, um, but love becomes part of her story as well. Um, the artwork is beautiful. And, you know, the number of hats that are in this and fancy shoes and things like that. Again, the next slide will give you an idea of the sort of artwork there. Um, it's just really, really fun. There's a lot of fans out there for um, Yazawa. Na Nana, um, it, it's not finished. It probably won't be finished, but this is a story that people will be able to complete. And then we move on to Demon Slayer, Kimetsu Academy. So this is taking the kind of the real favorite characters from the series um, Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba, and we are sending them to school. We are sending them to Kimetsu Academy. Um, it's a comedic spin-off to Demon Slayer. I, one thing I will say is it is rated teen. Um, the cover kind of makes it look like it maybe would appropriate be appropriate for younger audiences. It is definitely teen um, uh, alongside Demon Slayer, but it's a fun storyline. Um, they are all getting into hijinks at school and, you know, um, you can see all of the different, uh, the, the, like I say, the hijinks that they get up to. Um, the next slide will give you a couple of insights into that. So you can see the style is different from the standard Demon Slayer, but um, it's, a very nice interpretation of it. And then we move on to the next slide, please, which is a um, short story collection of Spy Family. So this is not manga. Um, this is a light novel, for want of a better word, but it is short stories. And it is five all new adventures featuring the characters from the best-selling series, Spy Family. Um, it's one of our best-selling series at the moment. The anime streams on Crunchyroll and Hulu, and it is incredibly popular. Um, and yeah, very, very cute as well. And then we move on to uh, Pokemon Adventures, Amiga Ruby and Alpha Sapphire Volume 1. Um, so this is inspired by uh, the uh, video games, Amiga Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. And we have published these previously as smaller format comics, um, the mini format that we would call them. These ones are, uh, this combines two volumes of those original ones and is in the same five by seven and a half format as the standard Pokemon adventures. Um, so here we have a real out of this world problem. Um, a meteor is hurtling towards Sapphire and Emerald's home. Uh, and so the next slide will give you some interiors there. And then we move on to In the Name of the Mermaid Princess. Uh, this is a very, very cute story. Um, it's a kind of uh, reverse take on the classic The Little Mermaid storyline. 
the main character is uh, she potentially has to give up all of her special abilities for love um, but obviously she doesn't really want to it's very very cute and it is very rare for it to be sort of like a tween romantic fantasy um, there's not a lot of romance in it there's a little bit um, but yeah it's very very sweet indeed the next slide will give you some images from that and then we move on to Status Royale. This is one of our Viz originals, and it is set in the world of uh, esports. I knew nothing about esports, and I was quite astonished to learn how popular it is. Um, I think the audience for one of the mo more recent uh, esports finals was larger than the NBA finals. So it is very, very uh, popular indeed. So this is about a girl who um, she has been playing this game called Status Royale, which is one of the biggest esports uh, games. And she's doing it sort of, you know, fairly casually until her friend who introduced her to her kind of, um, uh, what's the word, sort of uh, uh, betrays her. That's it. Um, and so now she is really competitive and vows to challenge her former best friend to win mm -hmm. Status Royale. Mm -hmm. uh, the next slide will give you some images from that. And then we move on to One Piece Ace's story, the manga. Uh, One Piece is a series that is very long indeed. Uh, we have volume 105 of One Piece comes out in March as well. Mm -hmm. This is uh, basically all about Luffy, who's the main um, protagonist of One Piece. This is about Luffy's brother, Ace. This was originally done as a um, novel, uh, One Piece Ace's story, the novel, mm -hmm. and it is now coming out as a manga series drawn by Boyuchi, who is the creator behind Dr. Stone. Um, the next slide will give you some images from that. One Piece, uh, you may have come across the Netflix series, which has done incredibly well recently. Um, One Piece goes from strength to strength, and it is still incredibly popular, even though we're at 100 and, well, coming up to 104 volumes uh, out next month. And then we have another One Piece story coming up next, um, Shokugeki no Sanji. Uh, this is a sort of a mashup between One Piece and Food Wars. So it's featuring uh, the main chef from um, One Piece, Sanji, and he is dishing up the most delightful dishes, dishes in his battle uh, with other chefs. Um, and it's a really fun story. This very, very funny indeed. Again, the next slide shows you some images from that. And then we move on to... Uh, Magia Luminaire, Magical Girls, Inc. Um, so basically the main character is, she cannot find a job. She's tried, she's hunted, she goes to interview after interview. And then one day her interview is interrupted by a monster attacking everybody. Uh, a magical girl comes to uh, get rid of the monster and she helps out. All of a sudden she's now got a new job. And um, it's a never a dull day in the office when you're a magical girl. The next slide will give you some images from that. So uh, the magical girls in this, they will sort of save the day for you. And then we move on to Stitches. This is an unusual one from Jinji Ito because it's an illustrated novel. It's not really a manga. There is a bonus manga short story in there. But um, the next slide will show you a kind of idea of the, the sort of style. So you get Junji Ito's illustrations in a much larger format, um, but it's not the traditional style. Um, but again, really, really creepy stories um, and, you know, beautiful, beautiful illustrations. And then we move on to Snowball Earth. Um, this is where post-apocalyptic future, um, the main character has escaped um, from a ship that's about to explode, lands back on Earth, but now the Earth is a snowball Earth, uh, completely frozen in a blanket of snow and ice. This has been recommended by a lot of top tier science fiction creators, the creator of Metal Gear Solid, Hideo Kojima, um, the creator of One Punch Man, one very, very popular um, and looking forward to this one. And then some illustrations from that. And the final title we have is Disney Mirrorverse Bell. So this is a prequel story set in the world of the Disney Mirrorverse game. And it is basically Bell becomes, she's the action hero. Um, she is the only one who has the power to protect her father in the village from all of these, you know, mysteries, uh, twisted, uh, basically all of the different characters coming in and from different uh, Disney properties 
Um, so you get all of those those fan feature fan favorite characters, um, and that is uh, some pages from there. Uh, that is everything. Um, sorry if I rushed a little bit at the very end. Um, all of our titles, uh, if you want to use this QR code, we link to an Edelweiss catalogue. Um, and that is it. And I will hand back to Heather. Thank you so much, Sarah. And thank you uh, um, to everybody who presented today, all of today's panelists. We really appreciate um, the titles that you shared with us and your enthusiasm for your authors, your illustrators and these fantastic stories. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's video recording, a title list, PowerPoint slides, and a certificate of completion for today's webinar. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit booklistonline.com slash webinars, where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming ones like those that you see here. Between January 1st and August 31st, 2023, ALA's Office for Intellectual Freedom documented challenges to 1,915 unique titles. That's an increase of 20% from the same reporting period in 2022. Join the fight to help protect the freedom to read by supporting Unite Against Book Bans and visit their website, uniteagainstbookbans.org, for resources, toolkits, merchandise, to donate, and more. And remember that you can utilize Booklist to support your library's collection development choices with reviews backed by the ALA. We have a special webinar subscription offer and don't forget that your subscription dollars help ALA advocate on behalf of libraries. We assist those facing an unprecedented number of book challenges. Email us at info at booklistonline.com for more information. And attention booksellers, the Booklist Reader showcases books your customers can purchase from your store today. In addition to sharing from your website, you can now distribute print copies to your visitors. Scan the QR code you see here on the screen or visit our website to order copies for your store today. We have a special announcement too today, introducing Booklist Book Club. This is a year-long partnership with your favorite publishers. Each month, Booklist will showcase book club picks and supporting materials from a different publisher, offering a wide range of genres and age groups to fit the needs of any book discussion group. Mark your calendars for November when we'll hear about book club picks from Macmillan Publishers. To find out more, scan the QR code on this slide or visit our website. Finally, thank you so much for joining today's webinar. And one final thank you to our sponsors, Random House Children's Books, Penguin Young Readers, Sequoia Kids Media, Yen Press, and Viz Media. This concludes today's webinar. See you next time.